Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day you've given us. Lord, thank you for this time we're going to be together. Father, I just pray that you'll bless. That Father, you, you'll let the message fall upon the hearts, the minds of people that need it. Father, please encourage all of us. And Lord, let us just all be thankful for your love. Let us be thankful for your compassion and the care that you've set over us. We love you and we thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. We'll be reading, starting off in the book of 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 15. In 1 Kings chapter 15, this is talking about King Asa. We're going to be talking about the kings a little bit more today. In verse number 11, chapter 15, verse 11. And it says, And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did David his father. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. And also Maka, his mother, even her he removed from being queen because she had made an idol in a, grove, in a grove. And Asa destroyed her idol and burnt it by the brook Kidron. And then still in the book of 1 Kings, if you'll go over to chapter 22 now. Chapter 22, beginning in verse 41. Chapter 22, beginning in verse 41. And it says, And Jehoshaphat, the son of Asa, began to reign over Judah in the fourth year of Ahab, king of Israel. And Jehoshaphat was thirty and five years old when he began to reign. And he reigned twenty and five years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Azubah, the daughter of Shilhai. And he walked in all the ways of Asa, his father. He turned not aside from it, doing that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away, for the people offered to burn incense yet in the high places. And then going over to the book of 2 Kings now, chapter 15. 2 Kings chapter 15, and look at verse 32. 2 Kings chapter 15, beginning in verse 32. And it says, In the second year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, began Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, to reign. Twenty Five and twenty years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jerusha, Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He did according to all that his father Uzziah had done. Howbeit the high places were not removed, the people sacrificed and burned incense still in the high places. He built the higher gate of the house of the Lord. You know, you look at these kings, and these kings had great intentions of seeing God's people fully worshiping God and God alone. They rid the nation of idols. You look at King Asa, King Jehoshaphat, and King Jotham, Jotham. They all rid the nation of the idols. If there were any idols there, they got rid of them. They took temptation away from the people. And the Bible tells us they did right in the eyes of the Lord all the days of their lives. And they were considered good, godly kings. But they failed to do one thing. And I believe that this one thing allowed the people of God to eventually fail God because of their idol worship. So, carrying along this line, thinking about these kings and, and how they were, were trying to be godly, getting the people's focus back on God, I want to share with you three things. First of all, I want you to see that when they ended the idol worship, they did it because they wanted to honor God. They followed God, so therefore they wanted to honor him. They made hard decisions many times to go against the ways of their fathers and to honor God. All the things that had, had been going on before, they, they, they put an end to it because they really wanted to make sure that God was honored above all. Uh, if you look in 2 Kings, we're still in 2 Kings chapter 10. Go back to chapter 10. In chapter 10, verse number 18. And it says, And Jehu, this is King Jehu, G King Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them, Ahab served Baal a little, but Jehu shall serve him much. Now therefore call unto me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants, and all his priests, lest none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. But Jehu did it in subtlety. To the intent that he might destroy the worshipers of Baal. See, when King Jehu came about, he wanted to make sure that Baal worship was over. He wanted to make sure that, that nobody that, that worshipped Baal would still be left alive. He destroyed all the worshipers of Baal. And he destroyed the graven images of Baal. It says he destroyed Baal out of 
Israel. See, Christians at times will have to make hard decisions in their new lives to abandon things that have been in their lives. They may go against their family traditions. These things that they abandon may not be honored to God and therefore they need to be removed. Just as these kings, they, they came into power, they came into the, the kingship and they saw the things that were distracting the people's attention away from God. So therefore they wanted to remove those false idols. They ended idol worship because they wanted to honor God. Um, keep your fingers there in, in the Old Testament, in the book of Kings, 2 Kings. Go with me to the New Testament, the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning in verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning in verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. See, the Bible tells us that when we become Christians, behold, all things become new. See, the way that we allow those new things to come into our life is by getting rid of the old things that are not honoring to God. And when we bring in those new things, they are honoring to God and that's exactly what God wants from us. So looking at the kings, when they first came into power, you look at King Asa, you look at King Jehoshaphat, you look at King Joth Jotham. When they ended the idol worship, first of all, they did it to honor God. Secondly, when they ended the idol worship, they wanted to take away temptation from people. See, if it was still around... And here he was, if he wanted to bring in God and make sure everybody was worshiping God, if the people looked around and still saw the false idols, they would have the temptation to go back to that. See, it's easy to worship something that is seen, but it's very hard to worship by faith something not seen. Uh, going to the new, still in the New Testament, go to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1, it tells us now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See, it's very hard to have faith in something that you've never seen. And here we are, we're worshiping Jesus Christ. We're, we're having faith that he is the answer, that he really is the, the truth, that he is the way, that he is the life. And we have faith in that. We've never seen him, but we know he's true. We know that he is the one, the true Savior of mankind. Still in the book of Hebrews, go to chapter 11 now. Still in chapter 11, go to verse 24. Hebrews 11, verse 24. And it says, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. See, Moses could have easily just said, hey, I'm the, the, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He could have enjoyed the rich life. He could have enjoyed the easy life. But he said, no, that's not what I want. You know, here I am. I'm part of God's people. I'm part of them. I want to make sure that I do what is honoring to God. He chose the life that may not be so easy because he wanted to be with God. He took away that temptation of the easy life because he wanted to stand for God. See, followers of Christ wanting to live a holy life for Christ must take away the temptations out of their life. We must step back at times and see if the things of importance in our lives are material things or are they heavenly things? Are they things that will benefit the eternal kingdom of God? Or are they things that are just benefiting us here on the earth for now? It's great to have money. It's great to have great material things. But truly, what is of importance in your life? Is it knowing that you're trusting God and you're doing what God wants? If you'll turn with me to the book of Philippians, I want to show you what Paul says. Philippians chapter 3, look at verse 8. The book of Philippians, New Testament, book of Philippians chapter 3, look at verse number 8. And it says, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss 
for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and I do count them but dung that I may win Christ. See, you look at Paul and he realized what was of importance in his life. It was to make sure that the will of, of God through Jesus Christ was going on in his life. See, Paul was an important man. He had had the right ed education. He could have been a part of the, the, the groups. He could have been Pharisees, Sadducees. He could have been a man of influence. But he was a man of influence. All because he chose Jesus Christ in his life. And he said that is what was of importance. All those other things that had been taken away from him, he considered them nothing but a loss. It was, it was no big deal because he wanted to make sure that Christ was exalted. So when you look at these kings in the Old Testament, when they came into power and they ended the good godly kings, when they ended idol worship, first of all, they did it to honor God. Secondly, when they ended idol worship, they wanted to take away the temptation from the people that the people wouldn't be tempted to go back to the old thing. That's why we as Christians have to take temptation out of our life so we don't go back to the old way of life. But the third thing I want you to see right now is that they failed, these kings, when they came into power, the good kings, they failed to fully rid God's people of idol worship. It says they removed the idol. It says that they were right in the eyes of God. But I want to show you, go back to the book of 1 Kings now. 1 Kings chapter 15 where we started. 1 Kings chapter 15 where we started. Look at verse 14. In 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 14, he says, and this is talking about King Asa, and he said, But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was perfect with the Lord all his days. It said that King Asa's heart was right with the Lord all the days, but he did not remove the high places. Then go over to chapter 22 again, 1 Kings chapter 22, look at verse 43. And here it's talking about King Jehoshaphat. And it says, And he walked in all the ways of Asa his father. He turned not aside from it, doing that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. For the people offered and burnt incense yet in the high places. And then going over to 2 Kings. One last time. 2 Kings chapter 15. Look at verse 35. And this is talking about King Jotham, Jotham. And in verse 35 it says, Howbeit the high places were not removed. The people sacrificed and burned incense still in the high places. He built the higher gate of the house of the Lord. See, these kings, even though they had the right intentions, they wanted to honor God. They wanted to take temptation away from the people. They failed to do one thing. They failed to take away the high places. You say, Brother Kenny, what's wrong with the high places? The high places is where idol worship and offering to these idols took place. It, it was uh, of pagan nations. This is, was their way of honoring their false gods. They would build these high places. They would burn incense. They would offer sacrifices unto these false little g gods. And it was pagan idol worship. And whenever these kings failed to do that, they failed to fully take away that temptation of sinning, of idol worship, away from the people. See, the temple is where God was worshipped. The temple was where sacrifices were offered unto God. That's why God went through great lengths of, of letting Solomon build this wonderful temple unto him. Because that's where the worship would take place. That's where the, the offerings were to be given unto God. That's where God intended for it to happen. But these kings left these high places... And because they left these high places, the people continue to burn incense and to offer sacrifices. See, they polluted the worship of God. Here it was, their king was steering them toward God, and they were participating and going toward God. But they were also still back in the old ways and doing the things of idol worship. And believe me, whenever you try to worship God, you cannot bring in strange traditions. You cannot bring in uh, sinful traditions and say, well, I'm going to combine them both and God will still be glorified. He's not. The only way that God is glorified is if there's righteous worship unto him. Who knows why they left these high places, these kings. Maybe they thought God could be worshipped there also. 
But pagan practices were to worship false gods in these high places. And the reason I bring this up is because many times Christians will set out to fully worship Jesus Christ. They've entered into a relationship with him and man, it's fantastic. And the, the burden of sin has been lifted off of them. Guilt has been lifted away from them. And they're living this new life with Jesus Christ. But they try to do it without fully ridding their lives of sinful things. Sad truth is. Sin usually is the thing that wins out. People can say, well, I'm going to worship God. And even though these sinful habits are still in my life, I can deal with those things and I can still worship Christ to the fullest. But you can't. You can't let these, these sinful things, these sinful traditions, these sinful habits uh, stay in your life and expect to be fully able to worship God to the fullest potential. It doesn't happen because sin usually wins out. Going back to the New Testament, look at James chapter 1. James chapter 1 verse 14. The book of James chapter 1 in verse 14, it says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. See, death is brought about by sin. See, sin never has a good ending. People can say, well, I can allow this in my life and it'll, you know, then nothing will happen to me. Sin never has a good ending. And we as Christians should be concerned about looking at our houses, looking at our lives and asking ourselves, are we fully worshiping Christ to our potential? And if we are, it's because we've managed to rid our lives, rid our houses, rid whatever of all the sinful things that are going on. And we're welcoming in the new things of Christ and his righteousness. These kings, they had hard decisions to make. Usually their fathers had, or their grandfathers had been very sinful kings. They had brought in all this pagan worship. They had brought in all this, this false idol worship. And then when the, sins, the, the sons became kings, they had very hard decisions to make. They were going to turn their nation upside down by ridding those false gods that their fathers and grandfathers had brought into. And they were going to make these very hard decisions. But they did it because they wanted, number one, to honor God. They wanted to make sure that he was everything, that everybody worshipped him. They were in love with him. They, they, they did what was right in the eyes of God. But secondly, they did it because they wanted to take away the temptation away from pe of the people. You know, if the false idols were still there and here they were pointing people to God, the people would turn back to their old ways of life. Just as us as Christians, we have to make sure that we don't turn back to the old ways of life. When the pressures come, it's very easy for us to go back. Go back to the things that we think may have brought us comfort. Go back to the old ways of doing things. But God wants us to stay the course. Stick with Him. Do what is right in His eyes. But lastly, just as these kings, when they failed to fully rid God's people of idol worship, they fell, it led the people back to failing God. If we as Christians don't fully rid our lives of sinful things, it very well has the potential of leading us right back to the old ways of life. And believe me, Christ paid an important price for us, for you, for us, for sin. He came to this earth, lived 33 years, a perfect life, a sinless life, just so that when he was taken to the cross, he would be able to offer a perfect sacrifice unto our Heavenly Father. See, the Bible tells us without the shedding of blood there can be no remission of sins. That's the price that God had placed upon sin, that there had to be a shedding of blood. And when Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, died upon the cross, He fulfilled the payment that God required for sin. And when we as people, we as humans, we are aware of our sin and where it will lead us to a place called hell. We're aware that because of sin, it has broken our relationship with God. But when we come to the truth, and as you're sitting there watching this right now, this is the truth. 
that Christ paid the price for your sins. And all he asks is that you accept him. You invite him into your life. You ask him to forgive you of your sins. And the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, that word saved is important because you'll be saved from hell. A lot of people don't like to talk about it. It's an ugly place. They don't even know if it's a real place, but it's a very real place. There's heaven and there's hell. There's no in-between. There's no limbo. When you die, the Bible says you're either in heaven or in hell. But see, we have the wonderful privilege right now of doing something about it, of asking Christ into our life. And once we do that, we have heaven as our home. And so understanding the price that Christ was willing to pay for us, his own life, should we not want to honor him and live the best life we can for him? And the way that we do that is by looking at the new things that he wants to bring into your life through the Holy Spirit of God. And when we welcome those things into our life, we have to realize we have to push out the old things, the sinful things, because those things are not honoring unto him. What if King Asa, what if King Jehoshaphat, what if King Jotham had knocked down the high places? What if they had totally obliterated the, the, the nation of Israel of being able to go back to that idol worship? We don't know. But we do know what we can do today as Christians. Knowing the price that has been paid for us and realizing what God wants from us. To live a holy, righteous life. And see... You're going to have to examine your life. See what is of importance. Are you honoring God? And if there are things in your life that are not, you have to remove those temptations. But third, make sure that you are preparing not to fail. By making sure that it's all gone. And fully trusting and having faith in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father and Lord, I'm just so thankful for the relationship that you've allowed us to have with your son. Thank you, Jesus, for the price that you paid. Lord, thank you for being a sweet Savior, willing to lay down your life for us. We don't deserve it, but we sure are thankful for it. Thank you that you're such a comforter. Thank you that even during these, these times that we're going through and living through right now, that you're still there and you're still our hope. You're still our rock, and you're still our fortress. Father, I pray that everybody that's listening to this, Lord, that they'll be encouraged, that they'll continue to have faith in you. And Father, I pray that this time, even though uh, we're having to isolate, that we can still look at our lives and, Lord, look to you, see how we can better ourselves for your cause. We thank you, and we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.